I, I just remember um, being a younger a- attorney and getting so angry about something. I don't know, know what it is at this point. It was probably very trivial, but at the time being so angry and then you're, you're pounding out this email, like this angry response email. And then like uh, some partner came into my office and he's like, well, what's wrong with you? And I would just like spout out everything I'm angry about. And they're like, okay, hold your jets, you know, and let me t- talk it out with them and show me that no, having this reaction, yes, you might be frustrated or angry, but this reaction to opposing counsel is going to get you nowhere. Yeah. Uh, just like yelling at an adjuster on a phone or you know, taking this aggression out on someone isn't going to get you anywhere, but also having someone to help guide you through the process and explain, er, show you like, I know how you feel. I felt that way too. Um, but this outlet is not a productive outlet. So let's Let's find a way to be productive. Vent to mm. your coworker, vent to, you know, your mentor, vent to yourself in the mirror, whatever it may be, <laughs> but find it a way to release this energy that's not it going to impact things negatively. Yeah. Well, that's a constructive way to deal with it. I, th- I think what's dangerous and I think what happens like going, coming full circle to the ethics is when you don't know that you're angry. Like, so if you know, like right off the bat, like, okay, I'm sad. I'm, I'm very sad about this and it's a real emotion or I'm, I'm angry about this. I mean, that's 90% of the, the battle right there. It really is. It doesn't mean that you can resolve it 100% of the times, but just recognizing that I think a lot of people, a lot of people who are feeling stressed don't realize that's, that's going on. And the people who are continuously, you know, going down the triggers of, of getting into a fight in the courtroom, Scott, or going down that path, the people who are the repeat offenders, those are the people who we have to really worry about. You know, those are the people who we have to protect. We've got to protect against people like that. But if, if you know you're angry and you're remorseful for your actions, you're truly remorseful for your actions, then you can rehabilitate and you can go down that path. But then there's also the side problem too. And I think it's part of the discussion of you know, you deal with people like that, and then the easiest door out is to give them what they want. I mean, that that yeah. is also, you know, while seemingly innocent, also falls into, if we want to be technical about it, a little bit of an unethical behavior. I mean, if well, I'm dealing with an attorney who I know is, has a history of just lying and cheating and making my life difficult, If I overvalue the claim just for the purpose of getting rid of it, I've not carried out my ethical obligations consistent with the way the model rules allow. And the same thing can also be said of adjusters. And I know I've I've had this conversation with so many people where when they see someone is involved, they'll purposely go down the path of least resistance just so they don't have have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you bring, we, that, that, that's a tough one because um, I'm very anti-confrontational and it's, it's, it's something that I don't like at all. And it's one of the reasons that I actually did jujitsu to relieve the anxiety and to force myself into that situation um, because there is something rewarding when you're in a dark place and someone's on top of you and you can't get them off of you it's rewarding. You're like, okay, I've got to relax. I've got to figure out how to get out of this, this situation. Um, but you're correct, Scott, because sometimes in circumstances like that, I think the best way to deal with it, it's like, if you hear something that you know is innately wrong in my past, if I heard something or I heard behavior that was wrong, I would avoid it. And I, and I would go down that path. And I didn't like that aspect of my personality. I still don't like confronting. I think the best way to deal with it in that circumstance or a best practice might be, okay, informing both your client and the insurance company, hey, we've got someone difficult on the other side to deal with. It's gonna be a little bit harder for me. I'm gonna take these measures to avoid unnecessary confrontations, but you may have to have this case drag on a little bit more, or this is what's going to happen in this case. And I wanna warn you about that. And then I guess, taking care of yourself because you can take care of your client. If you're, if you're in a good place, Scott, and you're calm during that deposition when that's going on and you're taking care of yourself, you're effectively making yourself stronger and you're taking care of the client by making yourself stronger and saying, okay, can I make it through this deposition with, instead of not getting angry, okay, 
I'm going to feel the anger and I'm just going to calmly, you know, object to the record and put what's going on and we'll go before the judge and we'll react that way. You're helping out your client in that circumstance by helping out yourself. So I think that's the only logical way that I can think of how to respond to it, a thoughtful way that I can think it doesn't always work. You're never going to bat 100% because we're human beings. I mean, I definitely don't bat 100%. I wish I could. But that's the only logical way I can think of to deal with that. Yeah, you see, my personality tends to be the the opposite. You know, if there's if there's the fire, or if there's some calamity, I'm I'm usually finding myself being the one drawn towards it. So, you know, a lot of times, what I'll do when I reach out to you know, or I'm talking with a, you know, someone at a carrier, and they're starting to lament to me about a certain issue or something, you know, I try to get involved to say, okay, you know, how can you get me involved so I take the fire, okay? Yeah. Let this person go on the way. He'll still be involved, but let me be kind of the, you know, the grunt on the front line there, you know, to, to take all of the incoming fire and we'll get the case to the, the resolution it should be. You know, and the same thing, you know, I found over the course of my career in the office is it's not that the people aren't capable of handling it, but sometimes, you know, we all hit our tipping point. Yeah. And yeah. it's when you hit that tipping point that, okay, who can step in that has, you know, maybe a higher tipping point and they're not going to hit that level as quickly. And sometimes it's just a, a different personality. It's not saying that person can't do their job for whatever reason, but it's just all part of our human nature. And if we can keep ourselves away from that edge, that tipping point, and, you know, Jiu and Jiu Jitsu, you know exactly what that is, you know, yeah. that point right before the arm's going to break, but it's not quite there yet. You know, it's like, okay, you know, yeah. exactly. When do you, when should you tap out? Yeah.